The European Scramble for Africa, also known as the Partition of Africa, was a period of rapid colonization of the African continent by European powers during the late 19th century. This aggressive expansion began in earnest at the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885, where European nations met to establish rules for the colonization and partitioning of Africa, a continent they largely knew little about. The scramble for Africa was driven by multiple factors. Firstly, the Industrial Revolution had transformed European economies, leading to a demand for new markets and raw materials. Africa's vast resources, including minerals, rubber, and agricultural products, were highly coveted. Additionally, there was a strategic dimension, controlling key territories in Africa allowed for the protection of trade routes and the establishment of military bases. The period was also marked by a sense of national pride and competition among European powers, further fueling the race to acquire territories. The Berlin Conference, convened by German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, sought to avoid conflict among European powers over African territories. During the conference, representatives from major European countries, including Britain, France, Germany, Portugal, and Belgium, gathered to negotiate and formalize their claims. Remarkably, no African representatives were present. The conference led to the creation of formal agreements that divided Africa into spheres of influence, without regard for. Following the Berlin Conference, European powers embarked on an intense campaign of colonization. By 1900, nearly 90% of Africa was under European control. The British established colonies and protectorates stretching from Egypt to South Africa, including key territories like Nigeria and Kenya. France controlled vast regions in West and Central Africa, including modern-day Senegal and the Congo. Belgium, under King Leopold II, infamously exploited the Congo Free State, leading to widespread atrocities and exploitation. The consequences of the scramble for Africa were profound and lasting. The arbitrary borders drawn by Europeans often split ethnic and cultural groups, leading to tensions and conflicts that persist to this day. The imposition of European rule disrupted traditional societies and economies, often resulting in resistance and uprisings. Additionally, the exploitation of Africa's resources and people had devastating impacts, including economic dependency and social upheaval. The legacy of the scramble for Africa is evident in the modern political and social landscape of the continent. Post-independence African states have struggled with the artificial borders and the centralized, extractive economic systems left by colonial powers. Understanding this history is crucial to addressing many of the ongoing challenges faced by African nations today. The scramble for Africa was a dramatic and transformative period in the continent's history, marked by European ambition and disregard for African sovereignty. The effects of this era continue to influence Africa's development and international relations. The European colonization of Africa during the scramble for Africa was marked by widespread violence, exploitation, and brutality. European powers employed various methods to subjugate and control African populations, often resulting in significant loss of life and suffering. Here are some key examples of the methods and atrocities committed during this period. The European colonization of Africa during the scramble for Africa was marked by widespread violence, exploitation, and brutality. European powers employed various methods to subjugate and control African populations, often resulting in significant loss of life and suffering. Here are some key examples of the methods and atrocities committed during this period. European forces frequently resorted to massacres to instill fear and suppress resistance. For instance, during the Herero and Namaqua genocide, 1904-1908, in German Southwest Africa, now Namibia, German troops systematically exterminated the Herero and Nama people. An estimated 65,000 Herero, about 80% of their population, and 10,000 Nama, 50% of their population, were killed through direct violence, starvation, and forced labor in concentration camps. European colonizers often employed scorched earth tactics, destroying crops, livestock, 
and villages to deprive local populations of resources and force them into submission. This method was used by the British during the Boer War in South Africa, 1899-1902, and by the Germans in East Africa during the Maji Maji Rebellion, 1905-1907. Colonizers imposed forced labor systems to exploit Africa's resources. The Congo Free State under King Leopold II of Belgium is one of the most notorious examples. Indigenous people were subjected to brutal forced labor to extract rubber, with millions dying from overwork, starvation, disease, and outright murder. European powers frequently conducted punitive expeditions to suppress uprisings and resistance. These expeditions often involved mass killings, destruction of property, and severe punishment of those who opposed colonial rule. The British response to the Mahdiist revolt in Sudan, 1881-1899, involved numerous punitive measures, including the massacre of civilians. European colonization disrupted traditional African societies, dismantling existing political, social, and economic structures. Leaders who resisted colonization were often executed or exiled, and traditional governance systems were replaced with colonial administrations. Colonizers imposed their languages, religions, and cultural practices on African populations. This cultural imperialism often involved the suppression of local customs, traditions, and languages, contributing to the erosion of African identities and heritage. The violent methods used by European colonizers to control Africa had long-term consequences that continue to affect the continent today. The arbitrary borders drawn during the scramble for Africa ignored ethnic and cultural boundaries, leading to ongoing conflicts and political instability. The exploitation and extraction of resources left many African economies dependent on colonial powers, hindering their development post-independence. The European colonization of Africa was a period of profound violence and brutality. Millions of Africans lost their lives, and countless others were subjected to horrific conditions and exploitation. The legacy of this era is still evident in the political, social, and economic challenges faced by many African nations today. Understanding and acknowledging this dark history is crucial in addressing these ongoing issues and working towards a more just and equitable future. Truth, Sanitation was, was practically non-existent. As you would expect. Slaves were forced to, to live in their own the excrement, which created a breeding ground for diseases like dysentery, arrived. typhus, Muslim and smallpox. The, the lack Sahara, of clean water and proper facilities exacerbated these conditions, like leading Zanzibar. to severe illness there and death. Fact, so many African the, the captives were given minimal food and water, often not enough to sustain them. The Malnutrition and dehydration were common, leading to weakened immune systems and higher susceptibility to disease. Many died from starvation and lack of water. Century. And in Enslaved cases, Africans like in were frequently India subjected to beatings and other well forms of physical century. abuse by the crew. Plus, this slave trade would Whippings be were common as a means to control and punish. To this brutality often but resulted in severe in injuries videos. and death. And as a bit of a side Resistance note, or refusal Islamic, to meet was met with extreme punishments. Would be used as a Torture devices like thumbscrews and the speculum oris, a device used to force open the mouth for feeding, were used to enforce compliance. The psychological and physical but toll of such of torture was immense, Other leading to many deaths. Torn apart by it, as In some instances, Africans who were sick, them, injured, or deemed too weak to, to survive the journey were thrown overboard. While this was sometimes reverse, done to prevent the spread of disease or to reduce the number of captives in case of food and water shortages. Amazons. These Additionally, there are documented cases where slaves were Joseph thrown overboard to claim insurance money for in the lost treaty, cargo. They bought 20 German the brutal conditions and treatment led many captives to, to despair. Some chose to commit suicide by jumping thought. overboard, this preferring death to continued would be suffering. A far better place for German the trauma of capture, to, combined with the journey's horrors, led to profound Plus psychological damage. The death toll on slave ships was staggering. Especially Estimates suggest that between 15% to 20% of Africans did not survive the Middle Passage, the journey treaty, from Africa to the Americas. This translates to millions of lives lost over the centuries of the transatlantic slave trade. That Joseph would have thought.